I have a very serious problem, and it's that I'm sitting here, enjoying a nice meal, but there's no way for me to get any exercise. Now I'm here, at the gym, but I still can't get any exercise. Oh, I'm here, running through the woods from some guy with a knife, but I refuse to get any exercise, because... Ooh! Because I choose to exercise exclusively through the medium of Wii Fit for the Nintendo Wii as it's the only exercise system that rewards me with fun digital points that make me feel good about myself. But due to the lack of power sources out in the wild that can handle both a monitor and a Wii, I'm generally only able to play Wii Fit from the comfort of my own home, and this just isn't enough for me anymore. It's time for that to change. So today, I'm going to figure out how a Wii Fit board works, and then put a screen, some batteries, and an entire Wii inside of one of these pancakes to finally enable me to become the world's fittest man. To start, I spent countless hours in Photoshop fleshing out a potential design for this build, and I eventually settled on this rather inspired layout. Unfortunately, I don't know if putting a screen here is even possible, so I need to figure out how a Wii Fit board works to verify that cutting a hole in it won't destroy any sensors. A Wii Fit board is pretty easy to take apart, and it looks like there are just four weight sensors built into the four feet of the board, which makes sense. When you play games that involve leaning, the board just takes measurements from each of the four sensors, and then does a bit of simple math to figure out where your weight is actually distributed. The important thing though is that there aren't any sensors in the middle of the board, so I should just be good to plot my screen down there, at least from an electronic standpoint. My one concern is that cutting a big hole there might ruin the structural integrity of the board. See, the main section of the Wii Fit board is actually two pieces of plastic that slot together and are reinforced by this metal frame, so there might be some potential for the board to flex a bit along the seam, which would be bad news for a fragile screen sitting along there. Now, a smart person would probably take some measurements, model the Wii Fit board on the computer, and then run a fancy simulation to know for sure whether the screen will survive or not. But I'm not a smart person. I'm a genius. And so I'm going to take the even smarter approach of just saying, I only weigh 130 pounds, it'll be fine. And then rely on my editor to remove that last take if everything isn't fine. Let's be honest though. It's been at least a decade since either of us last stood on one of these, so we need to fire up Wii Fit again to answer a few important questions. Like, how many Wii Fit exercises aren't going to work if I can't put my full weight where I want to put the screen? And do I actually need a sensor bar in order to play Wii Fit? And does my fate as an individual in this world have a predetermined outcome set in stone through the actions of everyone around me and the whims of the little worm that lives in my brain? Well, the only way to find out is by playing a lot of Wii Fit. And so, on one fateful Friday, I locked myself in to play every single game Wii Fit has to offer, in a single sitting, slash standing, slash lunging, and honestly, it wasn't nearly as bad as I had expected it to be. It only took around three hours to try out everything in Wii Fit Plus, so I've now got a pretty good idea of what all is needed for everything to be playable. First, there are basically no exercises that force you to put your entire weight right in the center of the board. The only one I could find is a warm-up exercise that expects you to balance on one leg, right where I want to put my screen. Every other exercise is totally fine with your entire weight being on one side of the board or the other, so I think I'll consider my 99% compatibility rate to be acceptable. Now, unfortunately, I did find a couple of exercises that try to turn you into a little teapot of the short and stout variety, so I will be taking precautions while using this board in public to ensure that everyone knows that I am a big, strong man and not a teapot. Moving on to the sensor bar, it turns out you can do almost everything in the game without actually needing to plug one of these in. The d-pad works just fine for navigating all the menus and making selections, but you have to use the sensor bar to apply a stamp to this calendar after your daily check-in. This stupid stamp means that I'll need to carry around a wireless sensor bar, but I've taken the liberty of securing a couple of velcro straps to it, so that it can be used on trees, my arm, or high voltage power lines if needed. Finally, for the question of how deeply free will impacts our opportunities in life, it turns out I made a small mistake. The back of the Wii Fit game has a little blurb about what I thought was fate, but it turns out it was actually fight, and this is just a section in French that tells you how to weigh your dog on the Wii Fit balance board. I don't have a dog. But I do have a cat. Her name is Kyrie, and she's very fitness oriented. So I need to build this portable Wii Fit project to get both of us into shape. So here's my plan. The Wii Fit board has this opening on the bottom that is normally used to access the AA batteries inside of the board, but I'll be powering the Wii Fit board without disposable batteries, so I can just remove this section of the Wii Fit board and put whatever I want in here. 
My plan is to 3D print two pieces, one that acts as a nice mounting board for all of my circuitry stuff, and then a cap piece that fits nicely into the battery hole. This piece will hold the cooling system and a bunch of buttons to help cut down on the number of holes I'll need to drill myself. Having my own 3D printer is very handy for iterating on and nailing down a design, but for the final piece, I'm going to want a professional print for the cleanest look I can get. This is where PCBWay, the sponsor of today's video, lends a hand. I'll cut to the chase. PCBWay's 3D printing services have made beautiful shells for many of my projects, like this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. They offer painting and dyeing services with a massive range of color options so that you can get a high quality custom 3D print that's ready to go straight out of the box. They also offer great circuit boards in a wide range of colors with prices as cheap as five bucks for 10 boards. So I've designed and ordered a couple little circuit boards to help keep my wiring nice and neat for my current project. If you have any ideas you're working on that could benefit from some nice circuit boards or a high quality case, then I'd highly recommend checking out PCBWay from the link in the description. While I wait for those boards to arrive, I'll spend my time working on the other parts of the project. I'm allergic to AA batteries, so I need to find a different way to power a Wii Fit board. I went ahead and diagrammed out the voltage lines on this main circuit board, and came up with the genius plan to power the board with a Wii instead of batteries. And my genius plan failed. My idea was to bypass the onboard regulators and use a 3.3 volt line, which did work up until the board tried to read the non-existent battery voltage and threw a fit about low batteries. So instead, I just said, unga bunga, voltage time, shove five volts in through the stock battery terminals, and that just worked. That's all the nerdy battery stuff we're gonna need from the Wii Fit board, so now let's make the really cool move of using dangerous power tools to cut a big hole in this brand new Wii Fit board that I got off of eBay for 50 bucks. That's a surprisingly cheap price for an unopened video game accessory from 15 years ago, so I guess other people just don't appreciate fitness as much as I do. Although, now that I have this thing in my hands, I am starting to reconsider whether I should destroy it just for a silly project of mine. It's in such immaculate condition, and it just looks so clean. I don't know if I can actually bring myself to- Just kidding. I'm crazy! Now, cutting through the board did take quite a while, because you have to clear out all this lattice work before you can actually cut the final hole. But, after inhaling enough plastic dust to become an honorary sea turtle, I'm left with these pretty rough looking halves. I've opted to super glue the two halves together to help make sure I sand all sides evenly, which proved to be a challenge on a test piece I did a couple weeks ago. To make the process a bit easier to nail, I 3D printed these little sanding paddles that are designed to be nearly the exact length as the sides of the screen hole, so that I can evenly sand across an entire wall at the same time. And these helped a lot. At the end of the sanding process, I'm left with a screen hole that looks pretty good overall. There are some minor flaws here and there, but it's a result I can live with. The biggest mistake I made was when I accidentally mixed up the air in and air out ports on my shop vac and blasted 30 minutes worth of sanding everywhere. That was an absolute joy to clean up. So a word of advice if you want to cut up your own Wii Fit board like me, don't. Just about everything for the final assembly is all figured out at this point. To help relieve stress on the screen, I went ahead and put an outline of white foam around my new hole for the screen to rest on. To mount the screen and speakers, I designed this little cage to hold them, which latches into the board just like this. There's no screws or glue used to secure this piece. It'll just be held down by the metal frame in the final assembly. I also went ahead and drilled the holes for the speakers and went with this rather avant-garde offset of the outer speaker holes to help bring a sense of a curve to an otherwise rigid project. And if you think I'm just coping because I completely botched lining up the drill on the first set of holes, then I guess you just aren't sophisticated enough to appreciate a master artist's vision. <laughs> Must suck to be you. Trimming a Wii was a lot more comfortable for me than drilling holes into plastic, and initial tests on this trim are looking good. Now, there are two relocations that this trim needs in order to work properly for this project. The first one is the Bluetooth module, as this is what allows the Wii to talk to wireless devices like Wii remotes and the Wii Fit board. I'm sure a wired GameCube controller would work wonderfully for Wii Fit given enough practice, but I don't think I'm brave enough to pioneer that method of play just yet. The second relocation that's important for this build is a component called the MX chip, which keeps track of the Wii's clock even when the system isn't powered on. This is critical for my project, as I need the Wii Fit calendar to stay correct for the years of use that I'm definitely going to put into this thing. My PCBWay circuit boards have arrived, so we're all good to proceed with the final assembly. I've superglued a 3D printed battery holder to the bottom of the board, 
I've installed the four layer tech suite to handle all the power management and audio stuffs. I've made sure that the charging setup works and I've modified the Wii Fit power button and LED to make it work for the Wii too. So the system is getting really close to being done. The Wii fires up and runs games perfectly, but I didn't go to the effort of putting a Wii into a Wii Fit board just to play a boring game like Super Mario Galaxy. I want to play Wii Fit. So it's time to finally see if this system can support my weight or if I'm going to have to do an entire redesign after this screen shatters. Okay. Um, that didn't look very good. My initial analysis was correct. Uh, that wasn't good. The screen itself didn't actually break, but the Wii it was connected to refused to boot up again after this. So I went back to the workbench, tore it all apart, couldn't find any obvious breaks, and then just put it back together. And some good news, it does still work. For about two minutes before that happens and the system becomes completely unusable until you turn it off and let it cool down for a while. Now, I always like to look on the bright side of things, and the bright side here is that I have developed the world's first ever Wii Powered Artwork Generator. It can make art for any prompt you give it, so long as that prompt is somewhere along the lines of computer in pain. Unfortunately, my portable Wii Fit machine can no longer play Wii Fit portably, so I think we're going to need to cool its artistic inclinations at least a little bit. So, what exactly broke here? Well, I don't know for sure, but judging by its behavior, I'm pretty sure something broke inside of the Wii's GPU. It seems like the Wii works fine while the computer chips are cool, but then when they heat up, something expands and causes a critical point to lose connection. The good news is that I have a theory on what might have caused the break. First, this 3D printed part that everything mounts to has a lot of flex to it that I didn't think about. Motherboards don't like to bend, so it's possible that the board flexed and broke the big GPU as a result. If that's what happened here, then in theory I might be able to fix the issue by blasting the GPU with heat and putting some pressure on it to try and get those broken joints to flow back together. And to my great surprise, this actually worked. The Wii now runs for extended periods of time without gobbledygooking, so I threw it back in the Wii Fit board, made some adjustments to keep everything from breaking again, and this time... This is my masterpiece. The world's first ever hula hoop proof mobile exercise system is finally complete. So to celebrate, I'm leaving my house and exercising wherever I want. Look, just give me a couple weeks and I'm there. At the end of the day, this has certainly been a rather goofy project. The screen is a bit small, playing Wii Fit is always scary, as one loss of balance could shatter the project, and it's not terribly portable, seeing as it takes up a lot of space and weighs more than the rest of my projects combined. But this wasn't meant to be a particularly serious project. I've done plenty of those in the past, so I figured it was time to mix things up a bit. 
Now it's also time to figure out what I'm going to do with all these extra Wii Fit boards. Because they were dirt cheap at the local used game store, and I didn't break nearly as many of them as I thought I might. I've tried a few different things, and my best idea so far has been to start converting the Wii Fit boards into jumbo sized playing cards, which work wonderfully for both high stakes poker and high risk 52 card pickup. If you'd like to support me financially for when 52 card pickup lands me in the hospital, then you can do that through my Patreon, where I post updates and ideas about upcoming projects before anywhere else. And if you just want to see more of my finished projects and the crazy gains I get from grinding Wii Fit, then hit the subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching, I'll see you again next year with some projects that are a little more practical. Maybe.